Hello, everybody. Welcome to another installment of Mankind in Training. I'm your host, Joshua Parr. And today, I have something I'm rather excited about, actually. <clears throat> I paid for the usage of Wolfram Alpha. <clears throat> Wolfram Alpha. And it is fantastic. So I'm going to share my screen. Um, being who I am, Wolfram can do <laughs> a lot of cool things. But being who I am, I jumped right to the Wolfram Quantum Framework because I was told that it rivals that of Kiskit, which is IBM's Python-based quantum computing framework. And it's, it, I'm not going to lie, it's quite impressive. So what I've done here is I opened just a, a Wolfram notebook, <clears throat> and then I installed the Wolfram Quantum Framework. And then after you've done this, you will get something that says Packlet Object, and it'll tell you the version of which you've just installed, and this is all the information that's coming with it, saving to Wolfram Language Data. <clears throat> so the <clears throat> very not first thing I did, obviously I did a bunch of things up here, <clears throat> but once everything started uh, clicking, you, you have to update the packages and get everything in order. But once once I got everything going, I uh, created a variable called ops, and I made it a quantum operator, and this is the Hadamard operator, and then a quantum operator, a CX gate, and then a quantum operator, another Hadamard operator, and then a quantum measurement operator, followed by a quantum measurement operator stating that it needs to be on both lines. And then I created a quantum circuit, a quantum circuit operator with ops. And then I'm asking for a diagram. Uh, it didn't quite, it wasn't quite loaded yet, so it didn't do it. It just said QC diagram. You'll see down below where it did work. <clears throat> so now I'm creating a variable called steps and I'm composing a list of operations and the quantum state registering on both of the lines. And then I'm making a grid, a transpose style grid with the initial state after the first Hadamard, after the CNOT gate, and after the second Hadamard. And then I'm asking for this formula, the steps, the frame, and the alignment. And it gives me this output with the initial state being a cat state zero zero and then after the first hadamard it's a cat state over the root two plus uh cat state one zero over the root two i forgot to say zero zero <clears throat> after the c naught gate uh we have a cat state zero zero over the root two plus the cat state one one over the root two and after the second hadamard gate we have all of the different states over two so now i'm creating uh, not creating, I'm asking it to display for me because this has already been created. <clears throat> a quantum operator <clears throat> called Pauli X. And this is a Pauli X matrix operator. It's a quantum operator. And this is a Schrodinger dimension of two by two, an arity of one and one qubit. They call them qubits in uh, the Wolfram quantum framework. So now I'm creating a second operation. And why I'm doing these is there's a set of beam splitters that I'm trying to uh, satisfy the things that need done. So now I'm creating a, a set of operations again with a quantum Hadamard operator, a quantum C naught operator, and the quantum Hadamard operator, just as before. I'm asking for the diagram, and again, it wasn't quite in line yet, but when I ask for just the QC, this is the, the general. There's a Hadamard, there's a CNOT gate, and there's a Hadamard, and then there's two measurement operators. So now I'm creating a quantum operator, Pauli X, with a quantum state, alpha and beta. And we got another circuit operator. So now I'm creating a Pauli X quantum operator 
just like I said before, and now we've linked up, and it's telling me that I have a pure state Schrodinger vector. It's two by two, and it has one qubit. So I'm asking if the quantum state beta alpha is saying true, quantum operator Hadamard, and I'm putting it at the quantum state one zero, which is changing, and it tells me that my quantum state is a pure state Schrodinger vector. And then once I ask if plus can be attributed to it, and it says true as well, quantum operator Hadamard and Pauli Z and Hadamard again. And then it tells me that now I have a two by two Schrodinger and it's different from the above Schrodinger. So now I'm creating a state with the quantum state. I have the, the cat being empty and one zero approaching alpha and <clears throat> one one approaching beta and a quantum basis of two and two. And I'm asking for the amplitudes and it gives me the, the direct notation of the amplitudes. <clears throat> so now I'm asking for the input form and it tells me all of the input form. Now I'm asking for a Toffoli quantum circuit operator, Toffoli. And then I'm asking for a quantum measurement operator. And it gives me this. This is the output of that quantum circuit operator. Now, say I have a beam splitter, and I want to satisfy everything that is here. I want to create a quantum operator that would mimic this. So I'm making a Hadamard operator, <clears throat> followed by a C naught, followed by another Hadamard operator. And then this is the actual diagram of the output and the measurement operators. So now I'm pretty much saying what I said earlier, now that we have everything on board. And I'm asking for the state amplitudes, and I got the, the direct notation of the amplitudes. So this is a quantum circuit operator. This is a magic quantum circuit. And it's got two S's and a Hadamard and a C naught gate at the very end. Now this is a Bell quantum circuit quantum circuit operator with a Hadamard and a C naught gate on one and two. This is the inverse Fourier with a Hadamard, a pi to the one half operator here and a Hadamard and this is not so this is the inverse Fourier and this is the actual Fourier as you can see it's lit the the term inverse is quite literal this is exactly backwards from that um, now I'm asking for the quantum operator a Toffoli operator and it tells me that's a Schrodinger and it looks something like these Eight dimensional with an arity of three and three cutis. Now I'm asking for a Curry operator, what that looks like. And it's a four by four, Schrodinger. And the cutis can be one, two, two, and the arity is one. This is the global phase operator, the identity operator. So now I'm creating a quantum circuit with the state and the register of the probability plot. And this is my output. Now, probability plot is supposed to display something that looks like this, but for some reason it's not doing what I'm asking here. <clears throat> so say I have this set up with the beam splitters. It's a beam splitter, this is a beam splitter. It's the directionals. There's a beam splitter at the end. This is the probability plot. So I'm composing a, a list of the operations of the quantum state in the register two. And again, I have a 0.25 probability in all of these notations. Every ket here has exactly a 0.25% probability of being the answer. So now I'm making a second transpositional grid with initial state after the Hadamards on the first qubit 
and on the second qubit and listing the probabilities in a in a grid. It's another quantum circuit. I was just trying to get it to display what it's supposed to display, but it doesn't seem to want to do that. So say I have this. This is a 50-50 beam splitter. So I want to make a quantum operator Hadamard, CNOT, and a, another quantum operator. This is the diagram. Again, with the probabilities, it doesn't, it doesn't seem to want to do what I'm asking. <clears throat> so now I'm making a Y rotation and theta, and I'm asking for the matrix form. And the matrix form is not supposed to actually have these diagrams. It's supposed to just have these the bra and ket notations, and we have one half of e to the i theta over two negative, and uh, one half plus one half e to the i theta over two. These are the probabilities of these bra and ket notations in the matrix. The y rotation of our quantum operator that we've created. So now I'm asking for the amplitudes of the quantum state at the Hadamard gate at one zero. And it says zero is one over root two and one is one over root two. And now I'm asking for the Y rotation amplitudes, Y rotation and theta at one and zero. And it gives me a list of everything that it just displayed for the matrix. So now I'm creating a quantum circuit with this Y rotation and theta and quantum operator and then measurement operators at the end. So I have the uh, Y rotation of theta and the Y rotation of theta. I have an X C naught gate, and then I have two measurement operators at the very end. So now I'm asking for the probability matrix. And again, it is <laughs> it's not giving it to me like it is supposed to. Uh, it's probably something to do with me having, I just downloaded this yesterday, so. I bought it for Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> uh, quant <laughs> the quantum framework in here is fantastic, but Wolfram Mathematica in general is amazing. It can do so many things, and it sucks that you have to pay for it, and you can do a lot of these things in Python, but it takes way more code. It takes way more understanding of the library that you're using. This is a very simple, intuitive language, and I, I enjoy it. I do. I couldn't afford it, but then I bought it, and I, I, I might find by the time that I'm done using it that I can't afford to live, to live without it. So now I'm asking for the probability distribution. I'm asking to plot that, and it gives me this. We have pi over two, we have three pi over two, we have pi at the well, and we have two pi and one at either end. So what if I had a beam splitter that looked like that? What do I wanna do here to capture what is going on? <clears throat> I'm going to create another quantum circuit. Now I'm asking for a diagram of that circuit. It really doesn't wanna do that for some reason. And now I am, uh, giving it the probability statements, and I'm asking it to list the plot of the echo timing, and then it did not, it should have a series of points here that go, that look like something like that. Every point that is listed here in the echo timing should be plotted here. We have some things we have to figure out yet, but I, I, do, en I do enjoy this. So uh, let's just go with, No. So I've done the quantum operator. Now, this is all the quantum operators that are already listed, and you can create your own. You can make any quantum operator that you feel would be fantastic. So let me run this right quick. The X spider quantum operator is a Schrodinger two by two with one qubit. So 
Let me go. All right. I want a, a diagram of the Toffoli. And this is what it brings back. We have a Hadamard, and we have a, a C naught for three to two, X naught, and then we have a Toffoli operator, Chronicer. We have another X naught that goes from three to one. So. Here we are. This is a real basic uh, demonstration of what Wolfram Alpha can actually do. It's it's absolutely amazing. So there's it has this one feature where you can type equal sign and you have Wolfram Alpha mode. And I can go, so uh, you just type in English what you want it to do. No. Well, I didn't want to do that, so... How about that? That doesn't make any sense at all. How about that? That doesn't make any sense. Usually this stuff does work. Well, that didn't work at all. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to demonstrate how cool this is, but it doesn't seem to want to do what I'm doing. So I'm going to end <laughs> this demonstration here. Uh, I will come back with another one, I'm sure. And then another one, and then another one. Uh, because I, I've seen the power of what it can do with differential equations. But uh, the Wolfram Alpha mode seems to not want to be cooperating today. Usually you can type in plain English what you want it to do, and it does, for the most part, do what you want it to do. 
just doesn't seem to want to be working. Uh, also, they're like this here. Things that should have worked but didn't. Uh, I may have to do some updating. I may have to figure out what's going on. But as a whole, this is a super cool thing to have gotten for a Christmas present. So Merry Christmas, everybody. And I will see you in the next presentation. Thank you for watching. If you like, subscribe. Uh, if not, I'm sorry. I have not lived up to expectations. I'll catch you on the flip.